Attention Northwest Arkansas businesses and talent seekers. Introducing Onboard NWA.com, your hyperlocal job board crafted for our unique community. Struggling to find the perfect match for your job openings? Onboard NWA simplifies the hiring process, connecting you with the region's top talent through tailored talent matching solutions. Whether you're an employer seeking expertise or a professional looking for your next opportunity, Onboard NWA is here for you. Discover more at onboardnwa.com and let's build the future of Northwest Arkansas together. It's time for another episode of I Am Northwest Arkansas, the podcast covering the intersection of business, culture, entrepreneurship, and life in general here in the Ozarks. Whether you are considering a move to this area or trying to learn more about the place you call home, we've got something special for you. Here's our host, Randy Wilburn. Hey folks, and welcome to the I Am Northwest Arkansas podcast. I'm your host, Randy Wilbur, and I'm excited today. I'm here actually in my newfound space, and it's it's an open space, that is, and I think it's appropriate for the guests that I have today, and, and we're actually in the Ozark Natural Foods Co-op Onyx Coffee Shop area, which you guys have probably heard about and you've probably seen. It's really, really a nice space, and so I'm I'm excited to be able to Give them a little plug because ONF is near and dear to my heart. I shop here all the time, but I also just, I think it's just a great place for folks to come. So I am uh, sitting down with Shelly Mober and Shelly Mober is a local, I won't say she's a local legend, but she is a local artist. Oh my goodness. She is a, she's well known. I, I have actually have a lot of, we have a lot of common friends and we connected about a year ago and I was excited to sit down with her and learn learn more about her background and she's an amazing artist. And so we finally got this thing together and, and with everything going on with COVID, it took forever for us to coordinate it. But we, we kept running into each we other. We kept running into each other and that's a good thing. And so without further ado, Shelly, welcome to the I Am Northwest Arkansas podcast. I'm so excited to be here. Thank you, Randy. Yeah, absolutely. So listen, I just wanted you to, to do one thing, and that's to share your superhero origin story. How did you get here? My superhero. Yeah, your superhero. Because every we all have one, right? And I think that's the thing. A lot of times when people don't know this or that about us, it, it creates instant conversations. It creates awareness. And I think we all have a story to tell. And I'd love for you just to give us a cliff note version of you and how you got to where you are now. And certainly, what propelled you to be an artist, or become an artist? Oh, well, I think there is journey for all artists on how they venture into their true self and their work and whatnot. I was born in California, raised in San Diego, and my mom moved here. I lived with my father and my mom moved here in 1983. Okay. And I visited her on summers for about six years. And then my senior year, I moved here and of high school and I moved to Rogers, totally different place. In Man, 1989. Like <laughs> and Fayetteville was the wild place. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It was where we went to do things that we weren't supposed to do. Oh, okay, okay. In high school. Yeah. Which wasn't that big of a deal, believe me. Right. Considering I'd just come from San Diego. But after that, after high school, bummed around for a while, did some Grateful Dead touring. <laughs> And uh, so you're a deadhead. Uh, yeah. A little one. Yeah. A little yeah. one. <laughs> okay. A little one. And came back to go to college and had my daughter my freshman year of college, mm -hmm. which created a very difficult college experience, but wor worthwhile because I <laughs> learned quite a bit and met amazing, an amazing community of which I'm still connected to 95% of my friends here that I went to school with or that were in graduate school mm -hmm. when I was in school. Yeah. And um, that's kind of how I got to Fayetteville. Yeah. So, so you went to the U of A? Yeah, went to the okay. U of A. Okay, yeah, great, and I great. studied sociology. And my last semester, I thought about changing to art because I was so completely drawn to it and fascinated. 
And my uncle, who is an artist, is recently passed away. And he said, no, don't go to art school. It'll ruin you. (laughs) (laughs) So I had already taken all of my electives and written my papers. Mm -hmm. So I just finished out with sociology. Okay, that's fine. That's nothing wrong with that. (laughs) So when did when would you say the art bug bit you? Oh, I mean, when I was a child. Okay, so my so, uncle has always been an artist, and in growing up in the Bay Area, you know, we I got to experience a lot of really unusual art. Yeah, you know, installations, shows, the culture, the lifestyle mm-hmm. at a very young age, and didn't get reintroduced to it until I um, went back out to California after high school and uh, lived with him for a little while, and just got back into. Being with him at the studio and watching him reclaim objects Mm -hmm. and create things out of art that I would have never thought of initially. I just didn't see things the way he did. And when I started to look at perspective and all of the things that he was showing me about colors and people's styles, I I was just mesmerized. And the one art class I took in college, I got a D in. (laughs) (laughs) It was ceramics and it was Clearly, that, that was, our teacher did not know what well, they had. Well, there at, was a story disc- behind that. But anyway, yeah. it's just funny because that was that's literally the only art instruction I've ever had. Right, And right. Uh, didn't do well. Yeah. <laughs> so I guess that's kind of a, a sign for me. <laughs> but I mean, so you come here, you get influenced by your uncle. He's out in the Bay Area. Of course, things in the Bay Area. I lived out there for six yeah, years, yeah, so yeah, I right. get it. But coming here, how did the Ozarks, how did Northwest Arkansas influence your artwork? Oh, well, that that is key. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> because the other thing that I feel like I was made comfortable with in California was that, you know, in my life was that my uncle was gay. And this was in the 80s, the height of the AIDS crisis. Right. And he was HIV positive. And, you know, so I've been through that. He lost his partner in 93. Mm-hmm. It played a huge role in my in my life, in my mind. I just, I've always felt the need to advocate for others. Yeah, we had a, we had a difficult childhood and I just can relate to social issues and I try to advocate with my art. And that is, I would like to say that that's probably the way that, that Northwest Arkansas plays into my art is that all of my art, every single piece that I do has a social basis to it. Mm -hmm. I like to think that my art is advocating for disenfranchised, LGBTQIA+, mental health awareness, anxiety, you know, everything that's involved with invisible diseases. Sure. Just really any marginalized group is, to me, something that we need to embrace because if we don't help one another, where are we really? Right, right, I mean, because right. if you can't lift one another up and, in, and celebrate everyone's successes, you're not in the right group or you just don't realize that if you're winning your friends are winning. Your friends are winning. You're winning. Right, right. And we right. all can. We all can succeed. Yeah, you know, it's not. It's not to. a zero sum game at all. Absolutely so not. yeah. No, no, no. no. <laughs> and I, I think we're slowly getting to there as a society in a lot of places, but we still have room for growth. And you know, I mean, I think that's the challenge that we face, right? As human beings, we're constantly evolving, constantly iterating. And I would say, you know, what would be when you think of it from that perspective? How has your artwork iterated over time? How have you? Because I've, I've seen some of your work that I was just blown away by. And I, I can't remember exactly what the material was, but you recycled some things and you made these really great prints that were, they, uh, yeah. they were like women or something yes. like that. Okay. So that is the, probably my, the closest to my heart is the body positive movement. Sure. And LGBTQ. Right. IA, but yeah, the body positive movement has a lot about self acceptance, self love, mm-hmm. um, just a body normative experience right. for all humans, thin, fat, you know, short, tall, whatever. Round doesn't, doesn't matter. matter. <laughs> so, but with my skin, what I do on my people, the portraits that I do, sure, I look through all of the magazines or whatever I have been donated. I get lots of donations of paper. I'm a huge. I've got my whole studio is paper. <laughs> yeah. It is just filled to the brim with paper, but I'll take it. And I'm, so I'm a kind of, a, I like to take things I see and put them away and I might have something for a few years. And then I'm like, I think, oh, I've got that great piece of paper with all of those countries on it. Right. I'll use that. Right. So it's kind of funny because it stays in the recesses of my mind right, right. when I don't remember that I have it. And then I call on it just 
it kind of it's kind of providence. Yeah, no, I, I love that. And I, when I saw when you described what you were using to create it, I was just like, so oh my that's gosh. what I was. Yeah, what I was trying to get at. I'm sorry, I deviated there. But the skin, what I do is go through all the photos. And probably when I first started doing collages, I started to realize using magazines, it didn't matter what type of media print it was. Yeah. It was impossible to find any diversity in it. Yeah, right. So I actually, just to complete one of my pieces, I have to get somebody to donate me Essence magazines or other magazines that show lots of diversity because in fashion magazines, honestly, you would think they'd be the worst. They're not. Yeah. It's just mainstream. Yeah. Printing, you know, it's crazy. So I would take all of the different shades of skin that are photos of skin. Mm -hmm. And then I combine them and that way it's representing all people and not just one person, right. you know, a Caucasian individual, but it represents all people of color, Hispanic, Native American. Doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Correct. And that and so I like to bring that and that is my attempt at a statement of inclusion. Okay. I love that. I love that. So that's kind of really what informs your artwork. Absolutely. Yeah. That's okay. behind every piece. So I know you've been called a social and you talked about this just a little bit. I spoke to one of your friends who's a mutual friend of ours, Kenya Christian. I'll give her a shout out. She's been on the Love podcast. Her. Yeah, Kenya did a- And she's a, my fellow board member yes, at Phoenix at, Art at Gallery. Phoenix Art yes. Gallery, right. And would you tell people where this art gallery is? Oh, I'm sorry. Yes, Phoenix is in Fayetteville, Arkansas, okay. and it's on Spring Street in Fayetteville across from, in the square, across from the old post office, sure. and it's a Cheers restaurant now. Okay. And we've got a beautiful, beautiful mural that stands out on the square done by Octavio Logo and Eugene Sargent. And we're really excited about Phoenix and what we've got in the future. We are actually changing spaces. We're still trying to determine where we want to, you know, enlarge our membership and develop programs in mm -hmm. education and art education and advocacy and just continue to embrace the Northwest Arkansas art community. So we're in a time of transition. We just got out of being an LLC, private entity LLC to a 501c3. And so we're in during the middle of a pandemic, transitioning into a nonprofit has been challenging. I'm sure. Yeah. yeah we've as got it is awesome for, people on the board. So <laughs> Yeah, as it is for most people right now. I mean, for profit businesses are having a hard time. I mean, everybody's having a go of it right now, right? And I think that's that is the challenge that we're all facing. But the one thing that I can say about Northwest Arkansas is that people tend to rally around the flag, if you will. It, and it, that is that is true? That's so true. Yeah. And okay. it, it's one of the things that took me a while to get used to from California because I remember when I first moved here, somebody waved at me when I was driving. <laughs> and, do you, you know, living in a metropolitan area. Yeah, of course. If somebody waves at you, you immediately take defense. Like, oh, what did yeah. I do? Oh, or, did they give you, or did they just flip me the bird? Yes, What's going on? That was so, yeah. exactly what I thought. <laughs> and I kept thinking, why is everybody waving at me? That's really creepy. <laughs> yeah, it is. But now is. I've realized, you know, that that is a genuine, just honest to goodness kind of Midwestern thing, and I didn't get it. <laughs> yeah, Midwestern, mid, or I like to say Mid-South thing, mid -South, right? Because it's hard right. to... It's so hard to kind of place because when people ask yeah. me where we are and I'm like, well, look, we're almost into Oklahoma. Right. And so when you think positionally, Missouri, no. Missouri Oklahoma, you got Kansas up there right. in the corner. It's kind of weird where how everything is. But that's that's just it. And so I think there is an atmosphere about this place that uh, affords us mm -hmm. that civility that you may not find in other parts of the country. And, I agree. Yeah. And so I think more than anything else, and I, I tell my wife this all the time. I'm thankful for that because, you know, there are just a lot of places where everything is just in your face and that may or may not necessarily be good, but it's what it is. So, right. Yeah. Yeah. I will say that that is one thing I have been grateful for every day during the pandemic that I'm here. Yeah. And I'm not in a larger community because not that larger communities are any different, but I like being in this size community that we're in because... Like you said, there's just so much support building one another up. And I was noticing on social media the other day that there are quite a few of people that I know that are doing drives for toys and things for the holidays for the less privileged. Yeah. And I just like being a part of helping other people get through this life. Right. <laughs> yeah. No, that's it. And it's so funny because, you know, as I got as, as I've gotten to know people here, 
I always find that I find the same people connected with like individuals, right? Like I think Octavia Spencer. Octavia Logo? Octavia Logo, yeah. So she, I don't know Keith. why I have Spencer. Keith? No, well, no, I'm, I'm thinking of somebody else. Then. Okay. I'm thinking of the woman that created the Love Conquers All. Oh, uh, Olivia the, Trimble? Oh, Olivia Trimble. Yes. That's what okay. I meant. Okay, Sweet yes, Pretty Woman so. on Yes, yes. Sweet I, City Woman r- on Instagram. Right, exactly. Right. Yeah, yeah. So, right. And you, you see, you threw out the hashtag like that. I, actually, I'm going to talk to you about Instagram <laughs> in a second, but, but I know that you are connected with her. You mm-hmm. know her. And, you know, there, I've just, what I've realized. I realized we all kind of know one another yeah. a little bit if we don't know each other well. <laughs> right, right, right. But I, I love that here is that, you know, there is, you know, a fairly close knit art scene. And there's a lot going on. And I know I got involved with the local rotary here in Fayetteville. And one of the members of that rotary runs a gallery in downtown, downtown Fayetteville. And, uh, and now, of course, her name would escape me. Is it Sharon? Sharon no. Killian. Sharon Killian. Okay. Thank you. Yes. I don't know Sharon, so, but right, yes, I right. know but Art Ventures. Yes. Yeah, so Art yes. Ventures yeah. is a beautiful, beautiful studio. I've They've been there a for new, a couple of shows. A new location. Right. Yeah. yeah. It's so, exciting for Northwest Arkansas. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, and, but that's just it, though. What people don't realize is that, you know, you have so many outlets here. Like, because people think, oh, you know, Northwest Arkansas, there's not much going on. And I'm like, well, mm, slow your wrong. roll there. We've got <laughs> Crystal Bridges and yeah. now the momentary. Right. And to me, like the momentary kind of is a perfect dovetail right into, you know, the type of presenter and artist that you do, artwork that you do, because it, it kind of opens up for the creator a space. Yes. Right. For you to, to be able to share that. And it's connected with such a prestigious, you know, venue. Right. And that's that's so what's really cool. I have a friend actually that has a studio down on Archibald Yell okay. and her name's Brandy Lee and she owns Big Sister Studio. Okay. And she has a an exhibit right now at the momentary that is a statement on Nick Cave's installation at Crystal Bridges. They reached out to many artists uh-huh. and included them in a exhibition and Brandy was one of them. And it, her work is amazing. And it's so exciting to see friends get these big shots. And, and she was already, she won the fashion week last year. Yeah. She was already a big hit. Right, right. But it is very exciting. And congratulations, Brandy. <laughs> oh, that's cool. That's cool. I love that. So, yeah, I, I would imagine that at, at some point in time in the future, your, your work will show up at the momentary. Yeah, I you hope. Know, yeah, why not? That would not? be nice. Because, so, I mean, obviously you have... You mentioned Instagram a, f- a few minutes ago, and, right. and would you mind sharing your Instagram handle so people My know? My Instagram handle is artist Shelly Mober, no spaces, S-H-E-L-L-E-Y, M-O-U-B-E-R. Yeah, and we'll put a on link Instagram. to it, on, yeah, right. we'll link to it on the you. show notes. But you actually, I love your hustle on Instagram because, you know, I mean, art, you know, you hear this thing. And one thing that I haven't really shared a lot on this podcast is a little bit about my father. My father was an artist. He was a quote unquote starving artist. He was an art teacher. Had a good job as an art teacher, but he was truly an artist. And he was an artist stuck in an art teacher's body. Yeah. If that makes I, sense. I know some of those. Yeah. Right. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> and he's stuck in an art teacher's even. body. Yeah. Yes. It's where it's like you can't go out and just completely do your art on your own because no. there's just, you won't be able to feed yourself. But you could possibly, if you step out in faith, right, and just try to do that. Well, it's, and it's that's tough. what I've been doing for the last several years is kind of being that starving artist. And just being able to focus on my artwork and living pretty minimally. Yeah. But you've developed a following, But recently, yeah. about, I guess, I don't know, maybe spring and end of spring, I really, really seem to just be getting a great deal of work from outside of the area. And I was able to move down, you know, move closer to the square. And I just love being, you know, able to walk to the co-op every day and walk up to Mount Sequoia is just basically above my house and and it's ins- it's an inspirational place to be it is amazing I, yeah. I really i am very grateful every morning that i'm in that neighborhood and i've got tons of friends within a block or less houses away mm-hmm. and it just during this pandemic it just feels like we're closer when we're all having to be apart especially if we live alone or, yeah exactly yeah, yeah. And, and that's important so let's get back to just some of your Instagram tips. Okay. How are you so prolific on Instagram? And, and, and you, it's not that you, it's not that you're just unashamedly 
posting stuff and, and just putting no, it out there. No, you're very you're very meticulous I, yeah, I about do. the way that you present your art. And I would love for you to kind of share that because I know we have people that are artists that listen to the podcast and others that might be thinking about, well, I, you know, I'm a creator, I'm a maker. Well, I want to put you, myself out there. Yeah. Instagram has been key for me that I have 75% of my sales are Instagram. 50% of my sales are local or 30%. I probably have a little bit more outside. I ship everywhere. I have shipped pretty much all over the world. So it's not confined. Yeah. And yeah. that's what's very exciting. And what is really exciting about social marketing or uh, digital marketing is just the potentiality of your audience. Because I literally, I mean, I do love Northwest Arkansas. It's wonderful. But Instagram, you know, goes way above that. Mm -hmm. And so once you kind of figure out how to navigate it, yeah. it's a really great tool. So what's the, like the biggest tip that has helped you so gain some additional hashtags. exposure? Would you say? <laughs> 30, Thir 30 hashtags. hashtags. Okay. So what are your favorite hashtags? Well, my favorite ones are Fayetteville, Arkansas, okay. Northwest Arkansas artists, sure. Arkansas artists, yep. you know, kind of just bringing in the locals. Ozark. Hashtag Ozark. I do um, Ozark's artists. Yeah. I switch them up every time yep. because I want, it's just the way the algorithms work and the way they suggest yeah. um, images for people to look at. Yeah. And so I try to just throw in some random words. Yeah. And I swear, <laughs> it you seems get... like all the time I'm just thinking off the top of my stream of consciousness kind of words and attaching them to, uh, you know, the you uh, never know. Instagram handle. Well, some yeah. of that's a little the, serendipity actually, that happens. It is, and people absolutely. just kind of stumble. That's how I've stumbled upon some, some people that I follow on Instagram now that I wouldn't have normally followed. But for whatever reason, I was looking up a hashtag or just looking up right. something so, and it just shows up. Yes. And that would be the, the thing that I would say to people that aren't super Instagram- savvy yes is that the more time that you put into liking commenting sharing and posting say that yep. your algorithms are there your work is thrown out there yeah so i have i don't know close to 900 followers sure okay which is nothing yeah in the instagram world but i don't care because it's the quantity it's the quality of who follows me exactly not the quantity right and i've got fantastic group that follows me and they share my work and I all of the time I have my work shared in other countries and I have people reach out and so it's like it's just exciting that's it broadens your your perspective and your idea of where your art can go yeah and I love I love that you share that because I think it is I mean you know with any of these tools that we have at our disposal they're only as good as how you use them and in, and, and, you know, the other thing is that there is enough free information out there for you to be dangerous. So you don't have to go buy in. I mean, you can buy, you, you can them. buy yes. a, a, a tutorial or something like that. And right. I'm all for that because I, you know, I create them myself. But I think there's just so much free information out there that you can be dangerous with it. Right. So. And but there, I think that the information is great that that you can find on the Internet about Instagram and whatnot. But really the real key is putting the time in and that's why there's a lot of companies that you can hire the SEO, sure. you know, that yeah. do SEO yeah, and they can robotically get you likes and members. And, but you know what? Those aren't going to be the people that interact with you. Those no. are going to be the people that on holidays, you know, reach out to you to do their, their family photo, exactly a picture yeah. or an interpretation for their, of their fur baby. Right, right, right. Whatever Anything, it is. yeah. And those are the repeat customers I've had is they reach out and ask me to, to do something for them. And then they, you know, end up following me. And I, I have people that I make something for a couple times a year. Yeah. You know, so it, yeah, it's exciting. That's it's awesome. Fun. That's awesome. Well, I have, a, I have a creator question for you because I know my dad, he had, and I know a lot of artists find their groove or their rhythm through music as they create. Yes, that's so what I'd, I do. So I'd love to know what kind of playlist do you curate, do you create art to? Okay, so <laughs> that's kind of funny because it really depends on my mood. Yep. And if I'm needing motivation, I will always put on Wu-Tang. <laughs> Wu-Tang, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Cream, get the money, dollar, dollar bill, y'all. Yeah. That's my favorite song. I love I that. I love that. Yeah, yeah. Like, yes, I love that. For those of you that don't know the Wu Tang reference, you have to check out Wu Tang Clan. 
And you know, those that's why those guys like Method Man and 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 uh, Red Man and all those guys have gotten so um they've gotten a, a lot of play over the years. I mean, Method Man is a big actor now. I I mean, love he's in him. a lot yeah. of movies and and so is um a couple of those guys have died. I think Old Dirty Bastard has died. Excuse my language, but uh, there's there's a few of them. But Wu Tang is a very interesting group. And you know, what well, the thing about Wu Tang that I, I'll, I'll mention and we'll move on is that they were unapologetically themselves. They were. They were. They I were true to all. themselves. Because yes. even then, back in the day when Wu Tang came deal. out, you know, as oh, an African American, as an African American, a lot of people were like, "Oh, their rap is cool," but those guys are kind of weird, right? They're not like the standard. Well, they're just extreme. They are. They yeah. are extreme. But but I actually really liked them. And as I went back over time and started listening to their stuff, I'm like, "Wow, these guys were prolific." Oh, and, and they were and this, so political. They and were. I think they were very what, much because they, they 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 because they were they came after like Public Enemy. Yeah. So they like did. like they were inspired mm-hmm. by Public right. Enemy and others, and right. so yeah, Wu Tang is uh, Wu Tang is, and you know they're they're a cultural reference. If you hear Absolutely. people talk about them, they they talk about them all the time. Absolutely. I see guys walking around with you know uh, the thirty six chambers and all this other stuff. I mean, Wu Tang is um, a lot of lot of cultural and pop references to Wu-Tang mm-hmm. that are that it still exists to this day. I mean, those guys were big in the 90s. Well, I so. remember, yeah. So yeah, I love that. So so Wu-Tang is, is part of your musical rotation. <laughs> it is. It's Anything one of else? Mine. Yeah, I've got quite a few. So let's see. I was the biggest Smiths fan. Oh, yeah. I love the Smiths. Yes. Yeah, yeah. So. And I am actually working on a piece right now of Morsi. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So we'll look for that. Yeah. But let's see the Smiths and I I'm I'm a big into seventies rock too. Yeah. I love, you know, Joni Mitchell and all that. Six folk l- and... long years on your trail. Yes. <laughs> call me morbid, call me pale. Yes. yes. So, so that yeah, that's so, half a person and that's yeah. my favorite song. Yeah. <laughs> Listen, I, I and know there's that something one. there's something haunting about his voice. Well, that is just it's just in, in the Smiths. He still didn't. Ha- he didn't have confidence yet, and he wasn't. I think he was already a narcissist, obviously, right. but he wasn't as <laughs> yeah. like publicly. Well, I guess he also hadn't come out, so that yeah, might be part of yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. But he just was a little less a braggart. Yeah, you know? yeah. But no. Now, like but after I've read his autobiography, supremely and everything, talented. Just, yeah, he. Um, but the he, words, wow. the 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 lyrics are insane. Yes, you know, and it and it's funny because you know, I mean, it's like. I had a lot of friends that were like, I remember because I they weren't somebody that I'd normally listen oh, yeah. to, but somebody else was like, no, you got to listen. You got to listen to these guys. No, that and, was my genre. Yeah. In high and, and, yeah. And, and, and so I and I was I just I listened to them and I probably discovered them later. I actually discovered them in college in Howard. So like between oh, okay. 87 and 91. So that's when I started really listening to the Smiths. So but yeah, I mean, that that's, you know, the Dead Kennedys, the Smiths. I mean, you know, they were just a number of. Uh, of groups that I started really discovering. Yeah. And then the only one that I had discovered prior to that was the B-52s, oh, which is one of my I, favorites. I've seen the B-52s in yeah. concert. Um, yeah. So. But there was a concert at the San Diego Sports Arena, and it was B-52s and Jesus and Mary Chain and Love and Rockets. Wow. And uh, Susie and the Banshees. Yeah. Yeah. It was yeah. Fun. That must have been. And I know some been. of my friends listening to this are going to be like, I was there. Yeah. I, was there. <laughs> I was there. That's cool. I love that. I love that. So. Yeah, well, no, music certainly inspires art and art inspires music. So, I mean, I mm-hmm. think that that goes without saying, but I, I appreciate you sharing a little bit of your your playlist with us and, and what you have. <laughs> I'm never going to listen to Wu-Tang the same ever again. I'm going to think about Shelly all the time when I listen to Wu-Tang now. So, <laughs> so what's on the horizon? I mean, you've, you've been dealing with this pandemic as we all have. Mm-hmm. And as we, at the time of recording this, we are in early December of mm-hmm. 2020. So even if you're listening to, th- to this a year or two later, hopefully by then we... Uh, have a vaccine and everything is good, but, but we're still in the throes of this. So I'd be curious to know what, you know, what your how you are dealing with this pandemic and, you know, what you're, you know, how you're maintaining. Well, I think how I'm maintaining is keeping busy and focusing on my artwork yeah. and trying to disconnect from everything as much as I can. I don't watch the news and that's intentional yeah. um, because <laughs> I just... I know enough that yeah. I don't need to get it <laughs> exactly. from the news right, and right. be upset by it all day. Yeah. So I steer clear from that. I have some websites that I trust that I go to for information. But other than that, I like to post on social media and get off. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, no, I, I hear you. Yeah. I hear you. I mean, that's just kind of the way that it is. And, I, and I'm hoping that this 
that we can get back to some normalcy sometime soon. I think we're all dealing. I mean, we're all, even the best of well, us, those that are the strongest of mind are struggling right now. Absolutely. And I was going to say is that uh, in the very beginning of the pandemic, I did notice that I had a lot of friends that felt this way as well. Now, there are the exceptions, but as an artist, you know that you're kind of reclusive anyway in most people, uh, they have their time that they create, and that's an alone time anyway. Yep. So in the beginning of the pandemic, it wasn't all that different, other than that I couldn't go to and do my normal routine. Mm -hmm. But in my studio, everything was the same. So initially, everything was okay in that way. Right. But I would say probably the mid-summer to the end of summer was just, it became too much. Yeah. Yeah. And it's just, I'm trying to be very cautious with people that I know that mm -hmm. are struggling. I have had mental health, uh, you know, depression. Sure. And so I get it. Yeah. And that's one of my biggest desires is to empower people that feel separated by, you know, by the fact that they might be depressed or anxious mm -hmm. during this. They feel alienated from their community or their family. You know, they can't go to holidays, et cetera, is to let them know that you're not alone. A, yeah. there are resources. I regularly post them on my Instagram profiles. Sure, sure. I try to always be cautious of, or I mean, not cautious, but supportive of those that are struggling because I know what yeah. it feels like. I mean, mental health is, is to me is one of the, the, the biggest issues Absolutely. Or, or rather, we've cre we've made it a non-issue, even though it is an issue. Meaning that we tend to ignore those things oh, that we don't like to talk about. Oh, absolutely, but it's about. so much better than it was when we were well, in high yeah, school. That's Can you, you're absolutely right. People yeah, were just I mean, signed well, off as crazy way, and just yeah, and and there were yeah. a few people I grew up with that you know had some challenges because of peer pressure and the like. But I, right. could, I mean, it would have killed them had they had Instagram and Facebook. It would have like totally. No. So I am so. Every day I deal with, I have three boys, um, right. 15, 14, and 10, and mm -hmm. I'm highly acutely aware of how powerful social media is yes. in their lives Yes, and how it control things. And it can control a narrative that you don't want no. to exist. I and can't so, imagine. I'm yeah, so thankful, honestly, that my kids are older than yeah, that. Yeah. My son is, both of my kids are on social media, but they're old enough to remember what it was like before. Yeah. Yeah. Especially yeah, my daughter. Yeah. yeah. My kids and, don't understand. Yeah. That. They don't. Yeah. Gen Z nowadays, those kids that were born after 90, uh, 97, 98, it's just, it's hard. Right. You know, they just don't have a frame of reference. They don't know things before the internet or anything Absolutely. like that. Absolutely. And so, yeah, I'm thankful that my kids have that sense and, uh, that, that we can, you know, that I don't have to patrol them like up, a lot of the parents now, right. I honestly cannot imagine what it's like right now during the pandemic to have yeah. children. I have so many friends that are attempting to work full time or create full time and then homeschool. Yeah. And I don't well, know. you know, like I say, and I'll use this overused golf reference. Everybody, every family, every parent unit, parental unit, every kid is getting a mulligan right now. And you know, in a mulligan mm -hmm. in golf is so where they give yeah. you, they just give you some strokes mm -hmm. and just say, hey, you yeah. know what, we're going we're gonna to give you a mulligan yeah, on this hole. Fine. Don't worry yeah. about it. Because I think that's just kind of, I mean, we all need that right now because otherwise it's, that, it's. And that's actually something that I have in one of my stories on Instagram right now is a statement by a uh, psychologist, a PhD, that says that we're all just expecting too much of one another right mm -hmm. now during the pandemic. Yeah. We can't be there for everyone like we would like to be no. or we can't be, we just can't hold expectations of any, anyone right now. Yeah. It's just not fair. It isn't. It isn't. And, you know, the other thing, too, is one of those creeds that we need to really follow now more so than ever before is that if you don't have anything nice to say, don't say anything. <laughs> so it's like because, I mean, you know, it's like it, it's those age old grandma references. Right. I mean, your grandmother, your grandparents or your great grandparents kind of gave you the, the golden rules. And, and we seem to not be following those golden rules as much as we should. But that's a whole different conversation. Well, that's funny so. that you say that, too, because I think I've told you this before. That my grandfather was the voice of San Francisco for 30 years. Oh, you did mention that to me. Right, and so right. he was in PR. Okay, um, okay. Which, you know, at the time was social media in right, a way, you know. Right, exactly. And so um, he was the public relations director for BART for, oh, wow. you know, yeah, yeah. forever until they transitioned from typewriters to computers. Wow. And he'd been a trained journalist and he had worked for the Washington Post and everything. 
And uh, so he went into BART as a journalist, but got kind of pushed into public relations. Yeah. And it's just so interesting now that I got to visit him all the time right. in his work environment. Yeah. Or several times, not all the time, but enough to know what it was like to go into a room and there were computers and it was like the whole room. The whole room, yeah. 12, 12 feet <laughs> exactly. high were Now computers. we carry a quality computer right here yeah. in our in our pocket. Yeah. So I wish my grandfather That's could funny. see that. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And it's funny because you, you know, BART stands for Bay Area Rapid yeah. Transit and that is that is the local transit system. And they were famous back in the 70s. Mm-hmm for having the most comfortable seats in right. in transit plus they used to pipe in music and i remember when they i did. yeah they did pipe in music it's for for and not they don't the best transportation now but <laughs> yeah but it's it's still reliable <laughs> yeah it's reliable uh, but, but trust me right. the thing i like about bart is that it takes you pretty much everywhere you need to go absolutely in the bay area in which South is really bay too. cool yeah, yeah exactly so so listen as we wind up i'd, I'd yeah. love for you just to kind of share just for somebody listening that's thinking about moving here okay. to northwest yeah. arkansas Share your why. Why do you, why make your case for, you know, why they, you know, what, what makes this place so special? I mean, you've already said a number right. of things, but, but just, well, let's... I, I think that it's definitely something you need to come and experience right. because every perspective is coming from, you know, it's all coming from a different place. But yeah. what I value is the hospitality of sure. people, yep. the welcomingness, you know, the, and the community, the sense of community. It, there is nothing like it. Yeah. I've lived many other places and there's just, I've never. It's not the same. It's not the same. And like what I tell people is, I mean, again, not that Northwest Arkansas is an anomaly in the state of Arkansas, but it is. It kind of is. Yeah. You know, it, it kind of is. is. I mean, but it it is, it's starting to emanate and go out further, right? Like it's starting to. You know, we're starting to affect those people that are in Tulsa and other well, places. Well, you know, and, and that's absolutely a whole other conversation. It is. But now that Crystal Bridges is opened, yeah. I mean, really, since Walmart has expanded, that's what brought yeah. so much to the area. In the terms of Benton County, that's really blown Benton County out of the water. Yeah. When I moved here, Benton County had one. I mean, Bentonville had one stoplight. Right. Right. Yeah. Well, it, it, and it's much different now. It's, and and it just, I don't even it just recognize even in the last twenty sometimes. years. Yeah. I've talked to people that say even I in ninety five, they were like, "This is yeah. not the same." You know, it's kind of like Atlanta before the Olympics. You know, Atlanta was a sleepy southern town before the Olympics. It was kind of big, but after the Olympics, it just and now if you go to Atlanta, you don't recognize it. It's just not the same Atlanta. It's not your yeah. grandfather's Atlanta. So, yeah. And I know. wish I want Fayetteville to slow down a little yeah, bit. Yeah, <laughs> I, I hear you, and and I think we will. I, I, even with the number of people that they expect us to have by twenty forty, I still think we have plenty of space. So I mean, there's, I think there are interesting things. There is wonderful things. Last thing. What's your favorite restaurant around here? And I don't want you to get any of your chef friends in trouble. No, cause, cause, but, yeah. but we're, I'm going to be honest. My go-to? Yeah. Hugo's. Okay. Hugo's. Yeah. Their fries are amazing. Yeah. yeah. I mean, yeah. There's several restaurants, but I love Leverett Lounge as yeah. well. Yeah. Hannah, um, I Hannah is great. There, yeah. So Hannah is great. And the Hannah's food awesome. is amazing. And, yeah. Ben uh, and Hannah are yeah. amazing people. Absolutely. And doing holidays, which I'm, well, I guess this won't be heard at Christmas time, but our show is a gift market show is open right now. Okay. Mm-hmm. Well, we'll put, we'll certainly put out a post about that and i'm not exactly sure when this comes out it might come out before christmas but we'll, we'll put a post oh, okay. out and yeah, we'll make sure that that in, of, information uh, is there December. good good so yeah we'll do that so mm-hmm. leverett lounge hugo's those are two places that i would certainly encourage anyone that's coming down here to northwest mm-hmm. arkansas to check out i don't out. let anybody that visits me not go to hugo's yeah exactly yeah there you go their sandwiches are great so yep. i definitely uh, would encourage that and i love the little setting down down it's, low i mean it's and it's, that is true fayetteville it, from the 80s it, i remember right you know, so. right so that's right yeah i love that so well that this is great well shelly thank you so much for for coming I'm so on glad this we finally get to do I it know, only this took us 12 months year <laughs> finally coming together we've been through and are going through the pandemic there's still so much happening but we finally got together, and I really appreciate you taking time to share your superhero origin story, share a little bit about your artwork, and I'm going to post all of this information in the show notes so people can see what I've seen that has impacted me, because I really do love art. And I, I mean, as being the child of an artist, I've always appreciated great art, and I think that you know, art is a part of life that we can never ignore, or we should never ignore. Well, and I would like to bring that one thing up really quick, is that that is one thing that I would really like to highlight for the pandemic, is that we've all had to turn inwards, we've all had to isolate more, and what has been getting us through? It's not just a visual art, 
but it's sound art. It's, oh, it's creating performance everything. art. It's any type of creation. Listen, this podcast what, has yes, been getting me exactly. through it. I've been recording these podcasts both virtually and in person. And I mean, we are doing this in person, but a lot of these, these are I've the been things doing, that get us through. These are the things you're absolutely right. You're absolutely and I'd also right. like to say that the other thing that I'm very passionate about with my art is to be kind yeah. to one another yeah. because you don't know the battles that people are dealing with know, on the I inside. Know, know. Their life may look perfect. I guarantee you it's not. Yeah, it could be a, a, and, a sugar honey iced tea show. Right, and inside, so we just all have so. obstacles that, you know, that we don't share with others. And yeah. so just be kind. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Well, man, you have, you've laid it out nicely and I really appreciate you doing that. Thank you so, so much. And I hope that uh, your friends and, and all those that are part of uh, I Am Northwest Arkansas Tribe enjoy this as much as I have. So thank Well, you so I hope much. so because I know that you're a big deal too. Oh, I don't know about all that. So. <laughs> well, you can get just, embarrassed about yeah, it. But, I, I'm just um, doing what I'm trying no, to do. It, so you're awesome that. and your show is fun and it's very engaging and I have really enjoyed being a part of it. And I also just uh, value your friendship. It's Thank been you so much. great knowing I you the last year. <laughs> absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. And that's the thing. I mean, more than anything else, the friendships that I am creating because of this podcast have been timeless and they've been perfect. So, and especially yeah. this year, it's yeah. just everything is just seems to mean more. Exactly. At least exactly. to me. Yeah, I love it. I love it. Well, Shelly, thank you so much for coming awesome, on. Randy, we really appreciate you. it. All right, folks, there you have it. Another episode of I Am Northwest Arkansas. Shelly was amazing. I really want you to check out her artwork. I'll be sure to put up and give me your Instagram. Artist Shelly uh, Mober. Artist Shelly Mober, Mober. And that is. S H E L L E Y M O U B E R. Mm -hmm. okay. It's artist in front. It's all yeah, one it's word. It's all one word. Yeah. Artist Shelly Mober. So you can just look her up on Instagram, check out her artwork. You, you'll see what I'm saying. Once you see it, you'll be, you'll be like, oh, yeah, Randy was right. So <laughs> anyway, but anyway, we <laughs> appreciate you. you. Yeah, so absolutely. So, but yeah, check out her artwork and you can get more information and more details from what, from all the things that we talked about on the show notes at I am Northwest Arkansas.com. I really appreciate you guys taking time to listen to this. As always, please, when you get a chance, rate and review the podcast wherever you listen to this podcast, whether it's Apple, Google, Stitcher, SoundCloud, no matter where you can find it. You can also find us on Alexa, as I always like to remind people. Just say, hey, Alexa, play the latest episode of the I Am Northwest Arkansas podcast, and Alexa will oblige oh, you to play awesome. that for you. So, How yeah. Cool. yeah, so so please, uh, we appreciate you doing that and continue to support what we're doing here to tell people stories like uh, Shelly's story that we just shared with you. Thank you so much for listening to the podcast. And as always, we come out every Monday. So be sure to tune in, subscribe to the podcast, and uh, we'll be, be happy to allow you to be a part of the tribe. I am Northwest Arkansas. So <laughs> it's a good tribe. It is a good tribe. Yes, it is. So that's all I have for you today. And I will see you next week. Peace. We hope you enjoyed this episode of I Am Northwest Arkansas. Check us out each and every week, available anywhere that great podcasts can be found. For show notes or more information on becoming a guest, visit IamNorthwestArkansas.com. We'll see you next week on I Am Northwest Arkansas.